Go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 2a, which is our foundation scripture. Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 2a. And then I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2a. If you're there, say amen. 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 Let's read real loud. Ready? Let's go. A good man obtained favor of the Lord. Hold it right there. A good man or a good who? Woman. Woman. Do what? Obtain favor of the Lord. So a good individual, a good person, and we're going to define that word good in just a moment. What it really means is a person with godly character will obtain the favor of the Lord. Go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and the long life and peace shall thy add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Verse number four. So shall find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. We go to Psalms chapter five, verse number 11. Let's read. Everybody read. Go. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Go to verse 12. For the Lord will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him. That word compass means surround. Everybody say surround. surround. Thank you. This is good. All right. God bless you. You may be seated. One day, a very wealthy man decided he wanted to build a custom house. So he hired a well-known, referred by others, contractor who would build this house for him. After settling on the cost of the home, the rich man asked the contractor, how long do you think it would take to build this house? The contractor said, oh, maybe about six to eight months. The rich man said, okay, that's perfect because I have to go out of the country for eight months and so I will not be around to supervise your work. But what I'm going to do, I'm trusting you to do whatever you have to do to build this house that I desire. The rich man told the contractor, he said, not only am I going to trust you to build the house, but I'm going to give you all the money that it will cost you to build this house up front. Contractor took the money, the rich man got on his jet and flew out of the country for eight months. The contractor decided in building this house that he would cut corners. He would use all cheap material to build this house. So he bought rusty nails. He used rotten wood. He used shingles that had been uh, blown off another house and put it on the roof of this house. He put a substandard sub pump in the basement knowing that where the house was built, the land would flood consistently. If you've never lived in a house with a sub pump, you don't have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you ever had to deal with a sub pump, and I remember in, in our home that we lived in when the children were growing up, the sub pump in our basement went out. And mom and I had been out taking care of some business. And when we came home, Katora came to us. Katora was probably in uh, elementary school at this time. 
she came to her mom and I when we got home and said, we have a swimming pool in our basement. <laughs> and we looked at each other, we said, Katrina, what, you, what are you talking about? We don't have a swimming pool. She said, yes, we do. We got a swimming pool down in our basement and we've been down there swimming. Our house had two basements. When we opened the basement, remember that movie? It was in the middle of a torrential rainstorm. When we opened the basement, water was up to our, our knees. I opened the back door and water came down the back stairs like a waterfall and put more water in the basement. So, so this was a substandard sub pump. So the rich man came back home. He stood outside the custom built house so proudly. And the, and the contractor said, look at all this landscaping. The landscaping cost about $15,000. Rich man was impressed. The contractor said, you see that door? You, that door was imported from Italy and it was cut from special wood. The contractor, the rich man was so impressed as the contractor had beautified the house on the outside, but the inside was a mess. So the rich man went in his pocket and pulled out a piece of paper and he gave it to the contractor. And the contractor said, what is this? And the rich man said, it is the deed to the house. I'm giving it to you as a gift. Some of that went right over y'all head right there. The, the point of my story is, it's who you are in private, not what you are known for in public that matters. There's a difference between character and reputation. Say character, character. and reputation. reputation. Reputation, help me out multimedia. Reputation is what others know about you. It's what others, y'all ready to take, to take some pictures or take notes? Reputation is what others know about you, but character is who you really are. I think for this message, you better buckle in. I don't know if I'm gonna get any shouts today, so I already shouted before I came here. Amen. I don't know how many loud amens I'm gonna get today, so I've already said amen before I came here. But today, we're going to begin to talk about, over the next few weeks, character under construction. Character, because we, we said two weeks ago that God was going to give us not only favor with him, but favor with man. And so the thing that activates the favor that we desire in our life is first of all, y'all, we got to work on our character. We gotta work. We, it's okay. It's okay. I know. I know. It's 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 gonna be tough this morning, but that's all right. We all gonna be better off when we leave here. I was sitting at my desk this week and last night in tears, studying and preparing this message because all of us have a reputation. Amen. 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 I know you to be. A faithful church member. I know you to be a, a, a nice church member. I know you to be a woman of God. I know you to be a man of God. That's our reputation. But the question is, what is our character when we leave this place? Y'all say amen real loud so I can hear Our character is the composition you have that screen. Our character is the composition of internalized values that determine, say with me, our words, our, words, our, actions, our actions, and our attitudes. Our, our character, in other words, is made up or comprised of what we say. I'll talk about that 
next week. I'll talk about words next week. It's comprised of our actions. Uh, and then it's comprised of Pastor Tina is preaching next week. So when I come back, I'll talk about our words. It's comprised of our words. It's comprised of our actions. And it's comprised of our attitudes. These attributes or qualities are built into our life and dictate, dictate our words, actions, and attitude, dictate our response regardless of the circumstance. Our words, say our words, our, words. our, attitudes, our attitudes, will determine how you respond to circumstances regardless of where you are. That's good. Thank you for that one good over there. I did hear that. <laughs> so, for the next several weeks, our character is going under construction. Here's my premise for teaching this set of teaching. Here's my premise. Here's my premise. Y'all have that? If you want the favor of God and man, Read it with me. Go. If you want the favor of God and man, you must develop God your character. What did I say? If you want the favor of God and man, say I must, I must develop, develop godly character. Could you do me a favor? I want you to go to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 through 7. If you want the favor of God and man, you must develop godly character. I'm going to talk about Joseph in a few weeks, but I just want to show you something right here. Watch this. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard and Egyptians, uh, bought him. Of, uh, of the hands or brought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites who had brought him down thither. All right? Keep going. Verse 2. And the Lord, read it with me, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was what? A prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now what did it say? The Lord was with him. Okay? Go to verse number 3. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace. That word, that, that word grace means favor. And Joseph found favor in the sight of his supervisor. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he did what? Put into his hand. Yeah, when he had, he did what? Put into his hand. He put it in his hand. Watch this. Because, watch the character of Joseph. Verse number five. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. You know what this is saying? God will bless where you are simply because you're there. Amen. Some things won't happen simply because you're there. Whenever Pastor Tina and I fly and we go out of town like we are in a few weeks, we're going to go out of town for the weekend. And uh, whenever I get on the plane, the plane automatically becomes Shepherd One. <laughs> See, whenever, if, 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 if Joe Biden stepped on a Southwest airline plane, that plane is no longer known as Southwest. It's immediately called Air Force One because of the designation of the president. So when I step on the plane, the plane becomes Shepherd One. That's my private jet, y'all. You got to call it before you get it. Amen. And I want to announce when I'm walking on the plane, Brandon, I really want to take that little microphone that the stewardess has and say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh -oh. I want you to know that this plane is not going to go down 
because yours truly, a man of God, have stepped on this plane. You all are a benefactor of the favor that's on my life. And that's how you should look at things. When you walk in Walmart, you should say, everybody is blessed in here because I'm here today. When you go to your job tomorrow morning, you ought to tell people, you really ought to thank me for showing up today. I really could have stayed home today, but I decided to come to work today because you all needed to be benefactors of my favor. What did he say? The Lord blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon, was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Where am I at? Verse number seven. Verse number six. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph, when I read this, I said, I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. It says, and Joseph was a goodly person, and with another translation that says, and Joseph, when I read this, I thought about me. And Jerome was a well-fit and handsome man. That's what the Bible said about Joseph. But I said, my God, they put me in the Bible. You don't have to, you don't have to celebrate. You don't have to celebrate. So watch this. Let's go to character. I look, let's look at our character challenge. The character challenge. Are y'all all right? Listen, 1 Timothy 4 and 7. 1 Timothy 4 and 7. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Watch what it says. Do not waste your time arguing over godless ideas or old wives' tales. Instead, do what? To be what? To be God. Do what? Train yourself, Train yourself to be what? God. Come on, y'all. We got to work on our godliness. Yeah. Let's go to verse number eight. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This verse gives three types of training. First of all, it gives spiritual training. It says spiritual training without foundation is disastrous. He said, have nothing to do with godless myth or old wives tale. You know what an old wives tale is? A superstition, a tradition. Let me tell you something, eating black eyed peas, black eyed peas on January the 1st will not give you favor in your house all year. Throwing cinnamon in the air will not give your house good luck. The Bible says, get away from all of this superstition. Looking at your horoscope. We don't, we don't go by a horoscope because we are under the cross. So I'm not an Aries, I'm a Christian. Listen, get away from all these superstitions. One of my good friends, one of my good friends, I promise I wasn't going to do this today. I promise I wasn't going to go down these rabbit trails. One of my good friends posted on Facebook the other day that she was denouncing her sorority because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. She said she will no longer be called a soror or by her line name, she would be called what God called her, and that was a child of God. I had to applaud her. That's character or testimony. When you wear somebody else's letters on you proudly, and they stamp their letters on you, and you cannot go out and bear J-E-S-U-S -S on you, there is a problem somewhere. You act more like your fraternity or your sorority than you do a believer. Wow. Say, preach on, Pastor. Preach on, Pastor. Spiritual training without foundation is disastrous. 
Now don't send me no emails, don't write me no letters, don't call me, text me, beat me if you want to reach me. I am preaching the word God gave me. Spiritual training without foundation is disastrous. Physical training, come on, with direction is beneficial. Y'all know what that means? Exercise is good for you. This year, how many of us can say, I need to exercise more? Amen. Amen. Okay? Especially those of us over 50. We, 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 here's how I know I need to exercise more. Because every morning I wake up, when I'm getting out the bed, I sound like a box of Rice Krispies. Jesus. Snap. Crackle. crackle and pop. I need to exercise. So physical training with direction is beneficial. Say, I need, I need. to get it in more. Let's look at that. Everybody drop. That means exercise. Yes. Physical training with direction is beneficial. Let's go to number three real quickly. Character training with spiritual and physical discipline is beneficial to your body and soul. So the Bible says, train yourself to be godly. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. In other words, I want us all to be more intentional in 2024 to becoming a better Christian by working on the inner you. Amen. Work on the inner you. Let me give you, let me give you seven quick statements. Let me give you seven quick statements. Number one, Watch this. Your faith will give you victory for the here and now. However, it's your character that gets you into heaven. Your faith will give you victory for here and now. But it's your character that will get you into heaven. I'm not saying be a good person. I'm saying be a person with godly character. Yes. Okay. Could y'all go multimedia real quick to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 23. Your faith will give you victory for here and now, but your character, look at your name and say, your character gets you into heaven. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Watch what it says. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Let's go, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, ready, let's read. Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name, and in thy name we have cast out devils, and in thy name we have done wonderful works, many wonderful works. And then Jesus said, I will say unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. But they're going to they're gonna be standing there. They're going to be standing and say, we have prophetic conferences. And we, we, we activated people in prophecy. And they're going to say, we had, we had special all-night prayer. And we cast out demons. And I saw the demon come out of the person. And they're going to say, we did all of these things. But Jesus is going to say, you had no character. You did not have godly character. So I got, Lord, I came to Bethel every Sunday morning. I sat in the same seat, Sunday after Sunday. But he's going to say, but who were you when you left out of the doors of the church? Who were you when you got in the company of people who didn't go to church with you? See, because around here, all of us going to act straight. Y'all ain't gonna stand outside and you know I'm standing outside. You ain't gonna cuss at nobody standing outside and you know I'm standing there. But Amen. the question is, what will you do when you are not in the presence of the company of believers that we are, are right now? What do you do at home? What do you what do you listen to the most? What do you drink at home? Maybe 
maybe some of us in here, what do you smoke the most? I know some people, some Christians, I know some Christians who smoke, who vape, who do all of that. But Jesus is going to say, but in church you was one way. Your reputation was this way. But outside of church, your character was this way. Let's go to number two. Let's go to number two. Ready? Let's go to number two. Read it with me. I can never grow beyond my character. Say it again. I can never grow beyond my character. Let's go to number three. Looking at my character strips reveals my direction. <laughs> Looking at my character strip will reveal my direction. I'm just giving you some foundational principles this morning. Amen. For you to, for us to go back home and review and meditate on all of these. Okay? Let's go to number four. Looking at my character weaknesses reveals my capacity. In other words, it reveals how much God can trust you with. Character weaknesses. Character weaknesses. Your, your, your strengths and your weaknesses. Keep going, homes. Don't get distracted. Let's go to number five. Character is not a gift. It's a choice. Is this her right for Sunday morning? I know y'all. I know we want to be shouting. I know y'all want me to say, "Won't we do it?" Ain't he all right? And three days later, he rose again. I know y'all want me to say that. I know y'all. I know y'all want me to say, "I know he's all right." But guess what? He will be all right if you be all right and get your character together. Let's go to number six. Actions. Yes. Do speak. Louder than words. Many of us claim to be a Christian, but the truth is, we are a whole other person when we leave out of church. You know what that's called? Duplicity. My SAT word today. Duplicity. That's deceitfulness, the condition of being devil in our lifestyle. Go to Matthews quickly, y'all. Matthews chapter 7, verse 15 through 20. Are y'all getting this up this morning? Amen. Let me throw it over here. At least, is this good for this morning? Yes. Okay. Matthew chapter 7. Guess, read it with me. Ready? Go. Beware, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ragging. You know what this say? Don't you get in everybody's prophetic line? Amen. That's right. That's right. Don't you let everybody lay their hands on you? Amen. You know what this say? Don't keep running after people who are prophetic or calling themselves prophetic because the Bible says they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Ravenous wolves. Go to verse 16, please. You shall know them by their what? Fruits. You know what fruits wow. mean? Character. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good what? Fruit. Or character. But a corrupt tree will bring forth. Eventually, who you are is going to come out. Who you are. I dealt with enough church people in my life to know that church people are oftentimes not who they say they are. Amen. Pastors are not who they say they are. They are. Keep going. Keep going. A good tree. Come on, let's read. Everybody read. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. You can't do it. Come on. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is what? Cut down and cast into the fire. Come on. Wherefore, by their fruits, by their character. Everybody shout character. character. You will really get to know people by their character. There are some people on our staff that I'll trust with my life. Julie and Stacy. As long as I have known them, I go. 
not. We have known each other, Julie, for what? Over 30 years. Watch this. How old are you, Jasper? Who? When we met Julie, Jasper was two years old. <laughs> now, it says something about our character for her to stay with us this long. Am I right? It says something. Julie had been to our home. She had seen our kitchen with dishes in the sink and with dishes not in the sink. And she didn't come back to church and say, y'all know what? They don't keep that kitchen clean. No. You know people buy their fruit. Okay, I got to close. Give me number seven real quick. Here's the summer. Here's the summary. My character determines my life trajectory. You want to know where you're going? Your character will determine where you're going. Say, my character, my character. Will, determine will determine where I'm going. Where I'm going. Now, your character, your character. Okay, I got to close. I got to close. I promised that I was going to work on my time. I promised I was not going to run down these rabbit trails like I often do. So I got to close right here. But my closing is good. My sainted mother, I call her sainted because she's in heaven. When she was here, she was a mess. <laughs> but my sainted mother, and they said, don't talk about my mother alone. My mama used to tell us, because somehow my mom knew we weren't living right, but yet we were playing the part at church. My mom knew that. Your mom knows stuff about you that you don't think they know. My mom used to tell us, Brandon, don't go to hell from a pew in the church. She used to say, if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to live it up. In other words, I'm not going to waste my time trying to be one way in church and one way outside of church. She said, I'm going to be who I really am. And I'm not going to waste my time playing church. Playing the role of a Christian. So she used to say, if you're going to be saved, act like it. You're going to be saved, talk like it. You're going to be saved, walk like it. You're going to be saved, live like it. Y'all know I got to close with a song, right? James Cleveland said it this way. Please be patient with me. God is not through. Y'all don't know who James Cleveland was? Yes, yes. With me yet. He said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. How many of us have to say, please be patient with me? God is not through. I now feel like preaching. With me yet. He said, but with God, get through with me. I shall come forth like pure gold. Yes. Like pure gold. Amen. Okay. Y'all ain't feeling the old time gospel I was saying. Y'all not feeling that. So let me see if I can hit you with a with, uh, 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 great hymn written by St. Michael. St. Michael. St. Michael said it this way. I'm starting with the person in the mirror. And now now y'all got me. I'm asking this person, this your mirror right here. I gotta ask this person, you gotta change your words. I'm starting with the person in the mirror. If you want your world, your world, your world to be a better place, just look at yourself. Half of the church 
didn't like James Cleveland, the other half didn't like St. Michael, but I pulled out another great hymnologist by the name of St. Stevie. St. Stevie wrote a song called Part-Time Lovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't act like you turned off that radio. Put it on 104.1 this morning. Come on, you know where you've been. Check, Stevie wrote the song. In 1985, we were 15 years old when he wrote this song. And many of us was living, I, well, I wasn't because, okay. Many of us was living this song. Part-time lovers still tell the story of undercover lovers who hide their infidelity from their partners only to find out in the end that their partners have been cheated on them as well. <laughs> and even though some of us in Bethel have been part-time lovers with God, he's always been faithful to you. That's his character. See, that's his character. <laughs> even though he's all, we've all, some of us have been unfaithful and part-time lovers with God. Say, he's been faithful. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. Y'all ain't saying it like your preacher. Use your preacher voice. Say, he's been faithful. He's been faithful. To me. To me. Well, what has he been faithful on? He keeps waking you up in the morning. He keeps you closed in your right mind. No Alzheimer's, no dementia, no short-term memory loss, no long-term memory loss, no senility. He keeps giving you the activity. Come on, somebody, what, don't flap your arms if you ain't take care of this morning. But if you took that, come on, move your arms around. Move your feet. He gives you the activity of your limbs. He keeps regulating your heart. He keeps regulating your lungs. All right, let me go to the 11 systems in your body. He regulates your respiratory system. He keeps your lymphatic system. He keeps your endocrine system. He keeps your skeletal system. He keeps your muscular system working. He keeps your nervous system working. He keeps your cardiovascular system working. He keeps your digestive system working. He keeps your urinary system working. He keeps 